I am Tu Kim Lam. Welcome to the Medical News Show from Washington, D.C. On this edition of the Medical News, we will talk about the stomach disease or gastric disease and the Helicobacter pylori bacteria. Gastric disease is one of the most common and the most widespread illnesses in the world. For the last 50 years, the concept and the origins of the gastric disease have changed a lot with time. Recently, the discovery of the Helicobacter pylori bacteria in the stomach has made a big transformation in the treatment of gastric disease. The researchers have found that there is a connection between this bacteria and the stomach cancer. Here with us today is Dr. Sangtran, who is currently practicing internal medicine in Falls Church, Virginia. Dr. Tran will talk with us about the gastric disease and the H. pylori bacteria. Welcome back to our medical news show, Dr. Tran. Yes, uh, uh, welcome to our shows and uh, hello, Ms. Lam. Uh, Dr. Tran, today we're going to talk about uh, the gastric disease and the Helicobacter pylori bacteria. Um, first of all, would you please explain to our audience where exactly the location of the um, stomach and what are the functions of um, the stomach? The stomach, I think, is as most people know, is that they, um, it's located in the upper part of the abdomen and usually it's about the umbilicus. If you look at the pictures on the uh, slide, uh, on the screen, you can see the stomach right in the middle about the umbilicus. On the right side is the big liver, and underneath the liver is uh, the gallbladder. The rest of the abdomen usually is just, uh, small intestine and colon. Now, the very important because we need to know exactly is what the function of the stomach. The stomach is like a pocket or a sac that contains all the food. And if you look carefully at the structures of the stomach, you can see, if you open the stomach, you can see the inside of the stomach called the mucosa. And around the stomach, you can see three layers of the muscles that have the stomach to contract and to push the food down to the intestine. Now, the inside the stomach, we call mucosa. Mucosa is very important because they secrete the one kind of acid and also enzyme to help with the digestion. Therefore, the function of the stomach is, number one, is to help to digest the protein by acid and the pepsin, one of the enzyme from the stomach. Also, help to digest or distribute the triglyceride by using the gastric glycogen in the stomach. The stomach is so important for the B12 to be absorbed because B12 will combine with the intrinsic factors. One of the important factors secreted by the stomach, the combination will absorb. Without the intrinsic factor, B12 cannot absorb to the intestine. And fourthly, because the, most of the bacteria in the food will be killed by the acid, high concentration of acid in the stomach. And lastly, it's the mucin and also help to protect the stomach and help to find again any really strands and foreign body go to the, the stomach. So in summarize of the function, you can see it's how important the stomach have digestion, secret enzyme, and digest on the protein and leave it into the, the, the stomach. So very often, uh, whenever we have stomach pain, we usually generalize that we said uh, it's a stomach, we blame for the stomach problem. However, based on the uh, research have proven that not, not only one kind of stomach pain is a problem. Uh, so can you explain there are how many types of stomach pain or stomach problem? Usually stomach pain is mean very um, vague term because uh, most of the people who say that I have abs stomach pain or abdominal pain, but basically uh, in the abdomen we have besides the stomach, we have liver, we have bladder, and intestine. So the only symptom related to the upper part of the abdomen related is mostly to the stomach. But in the stomach we have different kind of disease related to that. We call gastritis and uh, gastric ulcers and reflux gastritis and lastly it's very important is cancer of stomach. Uh, these are the four very common 
disease of stomach that I think we're going to talk about. So one of the, the gastric disease you mentioned was the inflammation uh, of the lining of the stomach, which is called um, gastritis. Can you explain it to our audience? Um, what are the symptoms and what causes um, inflammation of the stomach? Yes, it's uh, gastritis inflammation of the inner layers of the stomach. And the symptom really is easy to remember. It's just usually you develop pain after you eat. And really you feel like poorly digested food and feel bloated or, you know, just have trouble after you eat. These are the symptoms of the gastritis. But it's, the symptom is not important by the underlying really uh, causes. Because the, um, the, the causes of the gastritis is mostly, in this country, is related to alcohol. And secondly, is the pain medication with different type, uh, and aspirin, Advil, ibuprofen, over-the-counter, or prescribed by the physician also have some effect in the stomach. And lastly, is uh, iron and cocaine, and people under so much stress also having gastritis because the stress will increase more secretion of acid in the stomach and may trigger the inflammation of the mucosa and causing gastritis. Thank you, sir. Uh, now let's talk about the second type of gastric disease, which is uh, gastric, gastric ulcer. Um, so what causes gastric ulcer, sir, and are there any differences in the symptom um, from the gastritis? Gastric ulcer is more severe than the gastritis because uh, in the mucosa it has the ulcers inside. Is it one or, or multiple ulcers? Therefore, the symptom is so more severe, more intense in, than the gastritis. But the only difference is of the two is in the gastric ulcer, people develop pain in empty stomach. When they don't eat, they hurt more. And gastritis is usually pain after you eat. So this is the only difference. Now, the people may have losing appetite, they may vomit, they may have stomach pain, similar. But the only difference is people have pain during empty stomach, and when they eat, they feel a bit better. So that's the, the symptom. Now, the underlying causes, um, if you look on the screen, you can see the ulcers really have the ulcers on the, the screen. But the cause is the same like uh, gastritis. Beside that, people, now the expert found out that there's good correlation of the presence of the bacteria called Helicobacter pylori and causing also as well. So that's make the changing in the treatment. Uh, later we can talk about that, especially this special bacteria. So we did talk about gastritis, we talked about gastric also. Now let's talk about the, 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 the one, the, the stomach disease that the most important one and the most dangerous one, which is stomach cancer. Very often the, the patient have no symptom and uh, based on the research state, 80% of the time the patient have no, um, uh, experience any pain often enough. However, how can a person or a patient recognize uh, suspect that they have cancer, stomach cancer, and what are the symptoms? The symptoms of the gastric uh, cancers is very uh, unusual because most people have no symptom. And the study shows that about 80% of people have uh, cancer in the early stage completely have no symptom. They have very vague abdominal pain, poor appetite, and feel like fullness after they eat. Uh, but in advanced stage, people may losing more weight, no appetite, and may have some kind of blood loss in the, uh, the gut and causing anemia. They look pale and tired and fatigued. So these are the very complex symptoms related to cancer. It's very difficult, not for the patient, but it's also for the physician to make a diagnosis. Therefore, sometimes we have to rely on the different kind of uh, method to make the diagnosis of, of, of cancer. But the very important about the cancers is what really trigger these cancers? What the risk factor? We use the medical term. Risk factor means something related to cancer of the stomach. The strongly risk factors found is helicobacter biore infection, the bacteria related to that. 
It's not just the cancer of stomach because sometimes it can cause the other places as well, like pancreas. And also the second disease that triggers the cancer is reflux esophagitis. When it becomes chronic, the chronic inflammation may trigger cancer later. Now, there's this possibility that alcohol, cigarette may relate to cancer, but the diet and the not well-preserved salty food may have some kind of related to cancer, especially smoked food. Smoked food defined means is you overcook, you barbecue at high temperature over 200 degree, any food, any meat and chicken or fish. When you do that, you causing the changing on the, the, the chemicals of the food and create the chemicals called heterocyclic amine which was really proven to be related to cancers of stomach. So be careful about these food because the food may trigger beside the bacteria. So cancer, stomach cancer is not only caused by your own body health, but also by the diet, the food that we eat too, right, sir? Um, thank you, sir. Uh, there are so many diseases that have similar symptoms um, with the, when we relate to gastric disease. Can you please tell our audience what are the current methods and, um, to make the diagnosis of stomach di uh, disease? Well, the, the methods of diagnosis is quite simple because in the past we your blood test, but your blood test really cannot prove that people have cancers or not. Only show that people may have uh, low blood count and relate to some kind of blood loss in the system and try to looking for the cause. And one of them is cancer, either stomach or colon. Then secondly, we use x-rays in the past 50 years. People who use x-ray, we call upper gastrointestinal series. Upper gastro means stomach, intestine is intestinal. If you look at the picture, you can see the real ulcer, and you can see the pictures of the upper GI. Now, it's not really very clear, but for the expert, they can see it. They can see the ulcer, they can differentiate the cancer. But the most advanced technology right now with your endoscopy, because symbol, which is put people in sleep and put a chip inside and take the picture, get the biopsy, uh, you know, can remove everything inside, you know, from the endoscopy, uh, gastroscope. So I think that's, that's the most advanced and most popular in the world right now with your endoscopy to make the diagnosis of any form of the gastric disease, including cancer of the stomach. Um, so, before we end the show, could you please give the audience some advice um, on the stomach disease? Well, my advice as always is, you know, you see something unusual, looking for some advice from the doctor, and try to not to eat too much salty or poorly preserved food. And don't try to eat too much overcooked barbecue food or whatever over 300 uh, degree Fahrenheit and try to quit smoking and try to drink less alcohol because it's well related to the cancer. And eat more fruit and vegetable because fruit and vegetable provide the antioxidant for the body to fight uh, disease and cancer as well. So I think that's the simplest recommendation. I usually you know, advise people to do that all the time, including the disease of the stomach. Thank you, Dr. Tran. That is all the time we have for today, and we will continue our conversation on the gastric disease for the next show. Thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, watching our shows, and uh, thank you for having me for, for this show. That was Dr. Sang Tran, who just shared with us some information on the gastric disease, as well as the causes and symptoms of this. We hope that the information that provided by Dr. Tran has shed more light on this health issue. What is the Helicobacter pylori bacteria? Where does this bacteria come from? And how dangerous it is to the stomach cancer? Please stay tuned for the answer on our next edition. That is all the time we have for this edition of Medical News. Thanks for watching. I am Tu Kim Lam. We'll see you next time on the Medical News. Until then, have a great one. Thank you.